Welcome to this week's GCN Tech Cleaner. You know the score by now. You bring the questions and I bring the answers. Well, at least hopefully that's how it works anyway. So let's go to our first question. First question is from Tone Van Bruggen who says, Hi guys, I've just bought a new bike, Stevens Pro Disc. When you buy a new bike or a chain, it already has lubrication on it from the manufacturer. The question is, is this wet or dry lube? Thanks in advance. And also they were kind enough to give some tips on how to pronounce their name. So that lubrication that's factory installed on the chain isn't specifically labeled wet or dry lube, but it is quite thick and sticky. Therefore, it's gonna be suitable for particularly wet and grimy conditions. And then over time, that'll wear off as you clean your bike and uh, as you ride it more often. And then you can just start to replace it with whatever chain lube you like to use. Next question in is from Jeremy Beals. He says, if you were gonna choose one frame to cover commuting in the Southwest, um, weekend rides and the odd bit of gravel, would you go for a gravel frame with a set of road wheels or would you go for a road frame with a set of gravel wheels? Hmm. So if I was in your situation and I could only have one bike and I wasn't solely concerned on riding as fast as possible everywhere, I think I would probably have a gravel frame set. I just think the difference between a gravel frame set and a road frame set, if you're comparing like for like on all the components, the body position, and then you just change out the wheels or the tires to suit gravel riding or road riding. The difference is fairly minimal. So I think the gravel bike covers all bases. And if you fall in love with gravel and going on adventures, then you've got a perfect bike for that too. So neither way will be the wrong one though. Next question in is from Xavier HS who says, Hi, how much difference does a marketed gravel slash endurance frame actually make on comfort versus a race frame? Can you actually feel it or is it a placebo? So there's a similar style of question here, the difference between a gravel bike or a race frame. And in terms of comfort, yes, a gravel bike is gonna have slightly more relaxed geometry, so therefore be a little bit comfier. But the biggest difference between those two styles of bikes tend to come from the components and the wheels and mostly the tires. So if you were again comparing like for like, I think the differences would be fairly minimal. But that said, the endurance and gravel frame set would be that little bit comfy and it's certainly not a placebo like you suggested. So next in is from Samuel who says, hi guys, bit of a weird, oh he says he has a bit of a weird body shape. Five foot six, 71 kilograms, a 28 inch waist and a 44 inch chest. Short and stocky after years of playing rugby and boxing. So they're struggling to get a jersey that fits. The smalls are very tight across the chest, but fit perfectly in the arms, whereas a medium is great in the chest, but a bit saggy elsewhere. So is it best to stick to the tighter top for aero gains or get the bigger size and suffer fabric flaps in the wind? Hmm, so choosing that type of range of kit. So choosing from a certain range of kit is can be quite tricky. Some garments are a slightly looser fitting, some are tighter fitting. So you could try to choose one that has a slightly more relaxed fit and that might help you out. But in terms of what I would suggest, I would get the jersey that fits your chest size best because then you can always get the arms altered at a, a clothing alteration company. It's quite a simple process. I've done it on jerseys and cycling kit in the past. They can simply take the arms in, make them a little bit smaller and tighter. Then you get your aero fit jersey that fits your chest perfectly. And thankfully, it normally only costs less than 10 pounds to get something altered. So it's actually not a big deal. And that's probably the best way to get a jersey to fit you perfectly. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to make a slight compromise in some areas. Next question from John Robinson. He says, hey tech gurus, please help. I've ordered some deep section carbon rims which have center lock DT Swiss hubs. I'm getting confused as to what rotors to get. There's loads of different options out there, but no real guidance beyond Shimano or SRAM. Does it really matter what rotor I get beyond the diameter? Um, the simple answer is no. The best advice I can give is to use the rotors from the same manufacturer and brand as the group set that you're using on your bike. Now that isn't crucial if you're using SRAM and Shimano, they are interchangeable, especially if you've got that center lock fitting. However, Campagnolo rotors are a slightly narrower gauge or width, so you can't mix and match with those. The center lock fitment is the same across all the different brands. It uses a lock ring similar to what you have on a cassette on your rear wheel, for example. So that, that part is interchangeable. 
but stick to the manufacturer of the group set that is on your bike and you won't be able to go far wrong. And as you say, the difference between the rotor diameters, you make sure and choose what is compatible with your bike normally on a road bike or a gravel bike between 140 and 160 should be perfectly fine. And then into our final question for this week's GCN Tech Clinic from Lucky Dog 77. That is the 77th lucky dog to ever join YouTube. Fantastic. Um, they say cross chaining is bad for your drive chain and chain. So correct? Yep, yeah, it is bad for your chain. Some of the riders on my group ride use the big ring but the lowest gear on the climbs. They say they can't bring themselves to do it. Who is right? Yes, I'm with you here. It is not ideal for your chain to use the big ring and the large sprocket on the back. It is going to wear out the components a little bit more and is an inefficient gear to use. However, if you're only doing it now and again, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Don't lose any sleep over it. And I just forget all about it, to be honest. If you happen to use that gear for 10 seconds to get over the top of a climb, don't stress. You're going to change out of it in a second. It's not going to ruin anything. It's going to have no detrimental impact on your bike. So there's the simple answer. Hope you enjoyed this week's GCN Tech Clinic. If you have, give it a big thumbs up. And remember, keep the questions coming in the comments section down below using the hashtag AskGCNTech. And well, I guess I'll see you next week.